All right, brother, today we are gonna have a nice little chat about weed, marijuana, Mary Jane, MJ, marijuana, Mary Squanny, that's a new one, pot, the devil's lettuce, all of the above. You might get triggered by this video. I know I would have back when I was smoking weed all the time, but just stick with me. You might need to hear this message and I know someone out there needs to hear this message. If it's you, cool. If it's not and you just hear because you like hearing me talk, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> this may be a little bit of a longer video because I got a lot of thoughts about weed running through my mind and I got a lot to say about it. So just stick with me. I know this video might help you out, okay? Let's just get into my experience with weed. I have a lot of experience with smoking it, vaping it, eating it. I did all of the above and I got burned pretty bad by weed. First time I smoked weed, I was 17 years old, which actually is, I guess for some people that's pretty young and for some people that's later on, but first time smoking it, I was 17 and actually funny story. My friends and I, we didn't even know how to do it right. We had this little pipe, probably like this big, and we didn't know how to grind the weed. We didn't know you had to grind it up. So like with weed, you put the nugs into a grinder, right? And you twist it. Bear with me, my lingo might not be completely accurate. It's been like three years since I actually smoked and had my own shit. So anyway, we were, we didn't know you had to grind up the weed, right? Into like tiny little flakes. We didn't know you had to do that. So we put in the nug, like we put in nugs this big into the bowl of the little pipe, into the bowl and smoked it just like that. So we went through like probably a whole like eighth of weed in a single night because we didn't actually know what the hell we were doing. And that was the first time I smoked. Like, how dumb can you be? We didn't even know you had to grind it. But anyway, didn't get high from that experience. So I was like, ah, anticlimactic, didn't really feel anything. But I remember later on that year, I smoked again and ended up getting high for the first time. And it was like, whoa, this is crazy. Like super mind blowing, eye opening. You know how it is when you get high for the first time. I couldn't stop giggling, I couldn't stop, like I had the munchies, I couldn't stop giggling and laughing. It was just a, it was a funny night, funny ass night. Sure enough, I started smoking pretty much daily after that, and then it turned into daily. My first summer being introduced to weed, it turned into daily use, basically a month into it. So that was my last year of high school, but then when I went off to college, it just got way worse from there because all right, now I'm not with my parents, I can smoke all day every day if I wanted to and that's what happened my roommate at the time had a bong so that's like that's like one of the most lethal ways to smoke weed like that shit hits different and we'd be ripping that thing all day every day bong rip here bong rip there every hour we were ripping that bong and then on top of that it's like we had uh little carts you know what those are weed cartridges that you can actually just vape it with so you can vape the weed from those cartridges. So like weed pens, we'd be ripping weed pens, we'd be ripping bong. I was getting high all the time. My reality became me being high as opposed to like sober me was just not even a thing really. I was more high than I was sober. So when I tell you I was a stoner, I was a stoner, all right? And we also had edibles and Eventually, I actually went on to ripping dabs as well. So we had a dab rig, like my roommate and I were complete full-blown stoners, potheads, weed heads, whatever you want to call us, and burnouts. I mean, shit, we were burnouts. We would smoke all the time and eventually did dabs, which is just a stronger way to, to smoke weed. Like it's just in its wax form. So it's more pure. It's more potent. Maybe I'm fucking that up, but that's what I remember. And the highs would be more intense when you rip a dab compared to just smoking out of a pipe or a bong or a joint. That kind of became my life for, it was three to four years of my life where I was smoking every single day. At this point, after probably just, a, after like six months of being of being a stoner, I became addicted to it. Like weed, weed is a drug. If you didn't know that, weed is a drug. You can become addicted to it. If you are reliant on it to eat food, to go to sleep, to met, to just chill out and because you, you like being high, that means you're addicted to it. I was fully addicted to it, completely addicted to it. And it ran my life for four years. It's so funny we tried to downplay the fact that it was, oh, it was just a recreational drug, it's not that bad. But yeah, when you're smoking it like I was, 
when you're abusing it like I was, it's it's a drug and it's gonna hurt you eventually. It's gonna make your life way worse and we'll get into that in a sec. But the fact that we try to justify it, we'd also say things like, and when I say we, I'm talking to my buddies and I, We so I would say things like, oh, but yeah, it's not as bad as alcohol. But then if you think about it, how is that a, val how is that a valid argument? Because alcohol is completely terrible for your body, For it makes literally every part of your health worse. So when you say, oh yeah, but weed isn't as bad as alcohol, yeah, might be true, but the thing is alcohol is so bad, alcohol is over here in terms of how bad it is. So if weed isn't as bad, weed's probably like right here. And then things over here, this might be stupid, but things over here are, are fine for you, are healthy for you. So weed and alcohol are over here, weed, alcohol. Oh yeah, but weed's not as bad. It's like, yeah, but it's still bad. It's still fucking up your life, still making you lazy, still making you depressed, still making you anxious, still making you weak. Shit, I'm getting fired up. I gotta calm down. <laughs> but this video is gonna be all over the place, by the way. But if you if you smoke weed, you need to listen to this, okay? Or if you've never smoked weed, you also need to listen to this because you need to know the dangers of it. You need to know that you should not do it. So disclaimer, if you've never smoked weed before, don't give in to the peer pressure. Just just say fuck you. When someone asks you if, if, if you want a hit of this joint, just say no, fuck you, I don't do that. <sighs> But I had to go through four years of being a stoner to learn all these lessons that I learned and basically had to get burned by it to now be able to share this with you. So, hey, maybe you need to go through the same experience as me, but I'm just warning you right now. So here's what happened to me after being a stoner for as long as I was. I slowly started, one, becoming more depressed, two, becoming more anxious, and three, becoming just weak and just becoming a shell of myself just this weak, just feminine version of myself because of all the weed I was smoking. And I was actually watching the Andrew Huberman podcast on weed the other day. Very smart guy, he's a scientist, he's a professor at Stanford. I think he's like some sort of neurobiologist. I don't know if that's his exact credential, but dude is way smarter than you and I. And he has this podcast on YouTube right now with over 3 million subs at this point. And he was saying how Smoking weed, especially chronic, chronic use. So chronic use, he was defining it as more than twice a or more than twice a week. I was doing it more than twice a day. I was doing it six to seven times a day, if like maybe more. So I was definitely a chronic user. He said, if you are a chronic user of weed, that th like there are studies on this that it increases your prolactin, which I don't really know what that is, but he said that when your prolactin increases your testosterone, testosterone decreases. Like it's, it literally makes you, and significantly by the way, significantly lowers your testosterone when you're a chronic user. And like I said, Andrew Huberman, smart ass dude said this. Not, it's not just me bullshitting you saying, oh yeah, smoking weed lowers your testosterone. No, it, it's a fact, it does. And because when prolactin goes up, testosterone goes down. Smoking weed increases prolactin, which makes testosterone go down. So I was literally lowering my testosterone every single day of every single week of every single year for four years in a row. Like, how fucked is that? I was, and I was, I was 17, so I was still, and by the way, I was a late bloomer, so I wasn't really fully matured yet. I wasn't, I barely hit puberty when I was 17. I was a late, late bloomer. So I was just fucking up my testosterone while my body, my brain, and just everything was trying to develop. And you might think, oh, Matt, that's not that bad. Like, who cares? Like, your testosterone is probably fine. Yeah, but the thing is, it wasn't, first of all, because I could literally feel the shift in me. Before smoking weed, I was more driven. I was more motivated. I had more just oomph to just get shit done. But once I started being that, that stoner who was smoking every day, I had no drive. My drive was shattered. No motivation. I couldn't even focus in class. I couldn't even, I didn't even want to be in class. I didn't want to do anything but smoke and play video games or smoke and watch TV or smoke and eat junk food. It makes you feminine. It lowers your testosterone and makes you feminine. I became so feminine that I had no, literally had no balls to do anything in life. I had no drive to get up and do shit. At the same time, smoking weed actually increases your depression and your anxiety over time. And this is something Andrew Huberman also said in his podcast, so go check that out if you, if you wanna learn more. But 
I'm here to explain it in an easier way. So smoking weed, yes, will actually increase your depression and your anxiety. But here's the thing, because you're probably immediately thinking, oh, but it actually helps my anxiety, it helps my depression. Yeah, I thought the same thing too, but here's the thing, it's a trap, okay? So when I, like, when I first started smoking weed, I was, I was a fairly happy kid, you know? I didn't have spells of depression. I, was, I had anxiety, but who doesn't when they're 17 years old? I mean, some people are blessed and, and don't really have anxiety, but I was an anxious kid. I had social anxiety, I was awkward, I was shy. But I wasn't too, too depressed. I mean, I had just gone through a breakup, so maybe I was a little sad. But I can guarantee that after four years of smoking weed, my depression was so much worse at the end of the four years than it was when I first started smoking weed. And my anxiety was through the fucking roof after four years of smoking weed, through the roof. And I would cope every single day and say, yeah, but when I, when I get high, I don't feel as anxious. I, I zone out and, and don't have to worry about my problems and I, don't, I feel more relaxed. And I feel better about my my life because, <clears throat> and and it makes me <clears throat> and it makes me happy and less depressed. So, it actually is helping my anxiety and depression. That's wrong though. It's a trap. It's a trap because you're only temporarily relieving your depression and anxiety. You're relieving yourself of those symptoms of feeling anxious and feeling sad and unmotivated and depressed. You're relieving those symptoms by getting high, because getting high feels good. But when you come down from that high, it's, it's back to real life, back to being anxious, back to being depressed. So you have to smoke again to feel good about yourself, to feel high. That was the trap I was in. I thought it was helping my anxiety and depression. So I'd smoke all day, every day because I needed to feel that high. I needed to feel good. When I wasn't high, I didn't feel good. I hated my life. So I smoked to feel good about my life, feel good about myself. And to feel happy. But the problem is you're not actually solving the root cause of your anxiety and depression. By me smoking weed every single day, every hour, I became more and more and more and more depressed, more and more and more anxious by the day because I wasn't actually able to step away from the weed and realize that that was contributing to it. Also, the things that were contributing to it were my lifestyle. I wasn't making any good choices in life. I was smoking weed, I was playing video games, I was watching porn. I was watching TV all the time. I was scrolling on social media. They all contribute to your mental health. Then the other thing is my anxiety actually got so bad that when I'd smoke, I'd get paranoid and my anxiety would actually increase. So it wasn't really helping me at all at that point because in the, because at, in the beginning it was like, oh yeah, I was smoking so I didn't have to think about my problems. I didn't have to worry about anything. So my anxiety would kind of be fine and I'd, I'd be relaxed. But after, I don't know, I was probably smoking weed like this for a, a couple of years where I was like, I'd smoke and I'd get paranoid. I would literally get more anxious while smoking. I'd be ashamed of myself. I couldn't look people in the eye and talk to them. And that probably is also because my testosterone was so low that I was a bitch. I was a fucking bitch. I couldn't look people in the eye and speak to them. I couldn't talk to girls when I was high. I'd go to parties and smoke weed in the corner with all the stoners at the party and I would literally get anxious about being there couldn't have any fun because I was just in the corner smoking pot, smoke, smoking pot, smoking weed in the corner and I would get anxious after getting high. All these negative thoughts would rush into my mind. What is that person over there thinking about me? Is that person over there looking at me? Are they judging me? Can they tell that I'm high? Does that person know I just smoked? Do I smell like weed? Oh my gosh, I gotta go to the dining hall now and actually get food like and interact with people? Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Paranoia, total paranoia. I mean, it was bad, like, it didn't actually do anything for me. It made my anxiety worse. And maybe you don't have these effects where you get paranoid when you smoke, but you're still lowering your testosterone. You're still becoming a weak, pussy version of yourself by smoking weed every day and thinking that it's helping your anxiety and depression. But really, over time, you're gonna get burned and it's gonna become a lot worse and you're gonna become so reliant and addicted to weed, which you probably already are if you're arguing for it. It's like, dude, you're not even operating at a high level because of the weed. It's making you lazy, relaxed, weak, like I said. Like, the amount of work that you could actually get done if you were not smoking and you were not addicted to this substance is way higher than it is when you're down here smoking weed 
consistently. I used to think of myself as a productive stoner. Like, that's bullshit. Nobody's fucking productive when they're smoking weed all the time because all they're doing is thinking about weed. Think about, oh, when's the next time I can get high? I don't want to do my homework. Let me get high and do my homework and think it's all fun and games. Like, <laughs> it would take me fucking double the amount of time that it would if I just was sober doing it. Anyway, like I said, <clears throat> it's like I, I kept having all these negative thoughts come into my mind when I'd smoke and I, I became a, a weak version of myself. I had no backbone and weed was a big contributor to that because it was just affecting my testosterone. It was also making me paranoid, making me more anxious and depressed. If you don't see this shit and you're still smoking weed and you wanna just keep smoking weed, I mean, fine, you do that. But I'm here just trying to share my message, share my story in hopes that someone believes me, not, not even really believes me, it just listens to me and can recognize that, hey man, maybe Matt's right, maybe I should quit weed, maybe I'll actually start improving my mental health once I get off it, maybe I'll actually start being able to do more work, maybe I'll actually be able to start speaking to people again without feeling anxious and awkward about it because I'm so fucking high and stupid. It makes you, <laughs> that's the other thing, it's like, you're so stupid when you're high. I was such a stupid little stupid idiot. <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> You're dumbing yourself down. It's it's making you dumb. I'm just over in the corner like <sighs> fucking sucking smoke out of the bong like a freaking crackhead. And then you get high and you're just sitting down like, oh yeah. <sighs> What's up? What? What'd you say? Like when you're super stoned, you're on the couch like, what was that, dude? Like you, you're killing your brain cells. You fucking moron. <laughs> This is like, I needed to hear this, I needed to hear this message when I was younger, so that's why I'm making this video. Don't get offended. If you're getting offended, you're weak. The weed's making you weak, that's why you're getting offended, because you're still a fucking pussy, because all the weed you're smoking. People who are triggered by this video have already clicked away, so, whatever. For the longest time, well, four years actually, it was making me content with my shitty life, because I hated my life, I didn't have anything going for me, I wasn't making any progress in any aspect of my life. My body sucked. My mental health sucked. My, I didn't have any money. I was a broke college student. Didn't have any, didn't have any skills. Could barely study, could barely read, could barely focus. But since I was smoking weed, I didn't recognize that any of this was a problem because I'd get high and forget about all this. Get high, forget about all my problems. Get high, don't make any progress. Get high, jerk off, watch TV, play video games, get high again, repeat. But I didn't really recognize that I wasn't making any progress in life, I just was content. It makes you happy with your shitty life. Because you know at the end of, the, at the end of that tough day, at the end of that tough hour, <laughs> you get to rip your bong again, get to smoke your joint again, get to Suck in that smoke and get high, mellow out, relax, and just chill and not have to think about any of your problems until two hours later when that weed wears off again. So for four years, I didn't improve at all because I was just content with my shitty life due to the fact that I was smoking all the time. It is not good for you. It is dangerous. It will keep you trapped for the rest of your life unless you figure out how to quit. So this is how I quit. I recognized it was a problem. That's step one, you recognize that it's a problem. I realized after four years of dumbing myself down, I'm surprised I was actually able to recognize that it was a problem because I was so dumb at that point and so addicted to weed at that point, but I realized, oh shit, you know what? And it's probably because I watched videos like this on YouTube because honestly my parents would lecture me about it, but like, you don't listen to your parents when you're that age. You should, but you don't, so I actually, found inspiration from a video probably just like this on YouTube. So the video lit a fire under my ass to quit and that was three years ago. So back in 2020, here's what I did. I was so in deep with smoking that I was not able to, I was like not able to quit on my own. What I did is I grabbed my shit, I had a backpack, I had my bong, had my weed, had my pipe, had my vape, had my weed cartridges in there, had, had it all in a backpack. I drove it to the dumpster near my house. There's a dumpster that way. <laughs> Pulled up to it, 
parked, got out, hucked the bag, and just smashed into the dumpster. Closed the dumpster, drove away. Haven't looked back ever since. I recommend if you have any fucking, if you have any paraphernalia, if you have any bongs, pipes, fucking tubes, glass of any sort, just smash that shit. Go to a abandoned park and just smash that, sh smash that shit. Get rid of it. Because if I had it, I wasn't going to quit. If I had it, I was going to keep smoking. If I had it, if I saw it, I was going to keep doing it. I had no self-control. And I stopped seeing friends that were doing it because I wanted to quit that bad. I wanted to improve my life. I wanted to stop being such a weak little bitch. Because remember, weed makes you weak. It's making you a shell of yourself. So I I had enough. I had. I was tired of... I was tired of being that weak guy. I was, and this was back when I started, like, and this was back when I learned about self improvement. So, I knew what I needed to do to improve myself. I knew I needed to stop smoking. So I, I hucked my shit into a dumpster, straight up, just threw it away. And obviously, I've smoked since then, but it's like I have not had my own shit. I have not bought any of my own shit. So I, I sound like a mooch. But it's like I haven't smoked. I've smoked maybe twice. Three times since then. And done edibles like probably, yeah, three times since then as well. So I'm, and I'm not like, I'm not addicted to it at all. I could literally go the rest of my life without smoking. I don't need it. And to be honest, after watching that Andrew Huberman podcast and actually now knowing how bad it is, knowing that it lowered my testosterone, knowing that it will lower your testosterone, I don't think I'll do it ever again for at least for a long time until like after I've had kids and maybe, maybe not even ever, but just saying, you gotta stop doing it. Maybe this video is a wake up call for you. Maybe you are now recognizing that you have a problem and that weed is actually causing a lot of the problems in your life. So I hope this video was a wake up call. I hope it inspired you. I hope this video finds the right person out there that needed to hear this message. It's not gonna be easy if you give it up, if you quit. You've been smoking for I don't know how long, but I, I was smoking for four years, so I knew I was very addicted. I knew I needed it, wanted it, was reliant on it to sleep, was reliant on it to, to eat. So I knew that when I threw my shit into a dumpster, I couldn't look back. I knew I was gonna suffer. I knew the in the first few days were hell. Of course they were. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I woke up in the middle of the night when I did sleep with cold sweats. These are some of the effects that'll happen to you, but it's, it's you're detoxing. Your body is detoxing from all the toxic weed shit that you put into your body. So yeah, the first few days are going to suck. That's what it is when you quit any addiction. There's a, there's a uphill battle, but when you make it over that hump, it's so much easier on the way down. The cravings become less and less. You don't feel like you need it as much. You start, your eyes start to open to the real world again, to being sober. Think about it. When you were a kid, you spent most of your days, you spent all of your days sober. When you were a kid, you spent all of your days sober and how happy were you? You have that ability to be happy within you without any outside sources of pleasure. You have the power and happiness within you. It's still there. You just have to get rid of the weed and the pleasure and just push it out and your happiness will start to grow inside of you again. That's what happened for me. I started to love life again. I started to enjoy being sober and realize that, oh shit, I can get high off life now. I'm getting high on life. I'm getting high off doing a meditation session. I come out of that meditation and I feel amazing. I feel high on life. And if you wanna keep doing it once a day at nighttime, you're still robbing yourself. You're still making yourself weaker. You're still lowering your testosterone. You're still reliant on it to go to sleep. You're still addicted to it. So that's not a valid argument. You need to just quit completely. Stop doing it at all. What's the, what's the point? Oh, but it makes me more creative. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. It makes you more open to new ideas and kind of zone out, relax, and just fuck around. But it's like, be honest with yourself. You can still be creative without weed. That's such a limiting belief. Like, ah, but it makes me more creative. What the fuck? Who cares? You know the, all the, the negative downsides to it. So why, with one maybe positive of it, of, oh yeah, it makes me more creative. 
that's one maybe positive of it. The rest of it, all the negatives, maybe becoming more anxious and depressed. And don't lie, because it's actually not helping your anxiety and depression. It's just temporarily relieving it. But then you, you become trapped by having to then smoke again and again and again and again to keep temporarily relieving it. But you're not fixing the root cause because you don't have the balls to just stop doing it and face your anxiety and depression head on and start to do things like delayed gratification, working out, meditation. Wow, I just lost my train of thought. Maybe I need weed to, to get more creative so I can speak clearer. Pfft. Yeah, right. Such a joke. Yeah, I just forgot what I was gonna say. So I'm gonna end the video because this has been a very long video, I think. I don't actually know how long it is. But with that said, if you're still watching, I believe in you. You got this. You can quit this disgusting, filthy drug if you put your mind to it. And everything in your life will become better because it's only holding you back. It's not doing anything for you. Like the video if you want, comment, any of your stories about weed, comment if you're addicted to weed, comment if you want to quit weed, comment if you are going to quit weed, just leave a comment if you want and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video. Peace.